Scott's key looking for that damage. Finds him on the Diablo. Diablo forced it back out as their health drops low. The Immortal now is at 20. Back down, yo, on the Greyman, gonna be the first to fall. But is it ETC? No, that's Malthail up there. A triple. The Leyline Nudes in the back, catching three people on top. That followed up by the APOC and the Lurking on Catching two, but this time on, it's gonna be the first Wow, did you see that much fit? Four man mosh fit while on a conveyor belt. That was like a regular sushi. There's the lead, catches a mud pit. Time trap does pop. Uh, mosh pit goes out. Fuji's still in trouble. Pops to stay alive. Listen, but it's not gonna matter. Here comes the board on the backside. The Bejeweled will get the one hit. And then stunned. Oh my goodness. The combo. He's getting shrunk down. He's getting killed. He becomes dog food for the crazy. I didn't think they had a chance. I thought it was all over. We said all or nothing, and they got absolutely everything. All right, good evening, and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Nexus Gaming Series showdown, where this evening we are going into Division D East. For some reason, um... My time, my title is not updated, but <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, but we are in Division D East. This is round number eight, where Team Ionic is taking on Team um, the Devil's Rejects. Let me just update that real quickly. These teams are ready to go. Team Ionic versus the Devil's Rejects. All right, I'm just gonna let them know the caster is ready so that they can start. I'm gonna have to switch things around a little bit because the home team was Team Ionic. It's just like uh, different teams have kind of like, like they're just set up differently. <laughs> uh, so I might have to just switch that around. But here, real quickly, taking a look at the map picks, we have Team Ionic was the one that did win the coin toss and decided to go with map picks. Uh, here we go. They got uh, Devil's Reject Expand out. It will be uh, Infernal Shrines and Towers of Doom. Team Ionic Band out. Braxis along with Dragon Shire. These are the reason why I say it's the other way around is because they switch things up. But swap. There we go. All right, there we are. So home team is team ionic but just the way they set it up that's how it's kind of looking but let's jump straight into draft for game number one at Volskaya foundry uh you're no miss. can i get five reasons why you think mustaches are the bomb uh the bomb.com and i will sub let's go team ionic hey don't trust us here let's go <laughs> why mustaches are the bomb it's <clears throat> a weird question I don't have a mustache, but I don't know. Some people like it, some people don't like it. <laughs> this depends who it is. I do not have an answer for you, my friend. I do not. Uh, but let's jump straight into draft here. Well, Sky Foundry being one of those maps where we, where it's like more so you're playing for macro along with macro toys is the name of the game you want your third camp you want your support camp once you have those it gives you an adverse advantage in the team fight so we see how these teams kind of play it out but you're enormous just subscribe thank you so much buddy even though i couldn't give you an answer i apologize but I really really do appreciate it welcome 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 to the kai crew <laughs> Ah, uh, much appreciated, sir. Much appreciated. Do you like it? Alrighty then. We got Johanna Bent out. Tyke has been out to start things off. I gotta make sure that the names are. I got proper names over here. We got S A Satan Saves, Lunatic, uh, Symbolic. Oh, they complete a beard. I like that one. I like that one. That one's really nice. Completes the beard. Makes you look like you're French. Or sense of manliness, I guess. I don't know. It's hard to grow a mustache, man. It's hard to grow a mustache. Oh, Keltazog gets banned out. Along with the lyrics. So I'm, so I'm thinking that Keltazog is a targeted ban here. Did you name yourself after the lead singer of Architurus? 
I do not know. Question mark, question mark. What you snacking on? Oh, I'm, I'm not snacking on anything. <laughs> oh, can you twirl them and look all fancy? How dare you? It's from Mayhem. Ooh. <laughs> uh, ooh, but I'm getting a little distracted. Sorry about that. Uh, Soldier of God. Corso is not playing, so it is Soldier of God. There we go. So coming up with a few bands right off the bat. We got Sonya picked, Asmodan picked, and Nubarak picked up from the side of uh, Team's Devil Rejects. And on the right hand side, uh, Team Ionic go with Ariel and Avala. With that Ariel and Avala pick, does this look like a little bit of a Cho'Gall maybe? What up, Harkin? I don't know. Um... I have not casted on against Bandit. I have not casted Team Ionic before. Uh, but I'm not familiar if they do play a Cho'Gal. If it is a Cho'Gal, I will lose my bleep. <laughs> uh, we'll see. So we got Sonya. Uh, Symbolic is playing the Asmodan. Hey, Asmodan is becoming a lot that Ava gets banned out. So I don't know. I don't know, maybe they're going to double double healer hyper support uh Vala. Oh, there's the stitches that I think you can still go in, but I don't know. I don't know. No, not anymore. You can't go in anymore. But what is this? I bet that's a uh, hexblade is playing an off lane Melganis. We're in the double front line. God, that's uh, that's uh, that's very interesting, very annoying, very interesting at the same time. Heavy, heavy front line, and then with an Oreo with her VIP and her revive or her um, chastise. We'll see what it is, what comes out. But on the side of uh, Devil's Rejects, we've got the Greymane and the Anduin to close things out. And Soldier of God is playing that Greymane. And the final pick coming up from the side of uh, Team Ionic. Uh, as Daddy. But it is okay. So, double healer, hyper carry Vala with a strong front line and stitches on Malganus. It's a crazy lineup. Crazy lineup. But we're going to see how this turns out to be, ladies and gentlemen. That is your lineup. We got Sonya, Asmodan, Anubarak, Greyman, and Anduin going up against Oreo, Vala, Stitches, Malganus, and Rhaegar. Everybody knows what time it is. It is that time when we are going to throw up a. You know what? What is it? What is it? It's gonna be a prediction. Let's go. Who will win game number one? Is it going to be the Devil's Reject or is it gonna be Team Ionic? I'll leave that up there for two minutes. Uh, go ahead and drop your votes if you are here to support the devil's rejects go ahead and drop your votes for them but if you're here to support team ionic go ahead and drop your votes for them but starting off on the left hand side in the blue trunks we have satan saves on the anubarak lunatics on the anduin soldier of god on Greymane, uh hebrew hammer on sonya and symbolic playing that asmodan that is going to be your side the devil's rejects and on the right hand side in the red trunks we got Aura Luna on the Rhaegar, Ragu on the Oriole, Stro on the Stitches, Hexblades on the Malganis, and uh, Colvian on the Avala. That is your squad in red, Team Ionic. Let's go. Mm. Stitches will have the. Uh, Oh lord. Just trying to read Harkin's like message is crazy. Uh not a bad play into Asmo. Sitches will have the sustain to stay in lane for a long time against Asmo. Alright. 
Well, we see stitches uh, in the off lane, as predicted by Harkins. Very well called. Good call. Good call. Uh, here comes that rotation of the four man top mid from both squads. And actually, actually, the Devil's Rechecks just keep it one person top which is going to be the asthma and three people at mid they're going to have one person rotate out of the three man but so far so good because asthma needs to get his stacks but how's he going to get his stacks if there's no heroes to hit he does go with that greed quest greed right yeah that's what it is 200 so i've got it on good authority that uh that if you complete your quest by 10 minutes, that means you're a good Asmodan. So based on those standards, we're gonna see how these guys do. Well, how this Asmodan does. But um, siege camps are up, which means the fortification camps, which means toys, toys, toys. They are on sale and both teams make that rotation immediately and start off with theirs. Uh, Team Ionic snacks theirs first and then followed up by the devil's rejects so usually the play after that is uh straight to the support camp but we'll see don't you says uh this says double tank i don't know snug by neil patrick harris nonetheless mm. don't love an uber act here front line is so bulky and vala sheds yep double front line into that vala hyper carry double tank double support <laughs> what is the meta coming to ccl hasn't even started as of yet oh my god looks like tdr is trying to run a 1-3-1 split might not work against a good wave clear comp like ionic is running yeah that's what i'm wondering it's like a 1-3-1 split but they're still they're keeping up in terms of xp they're slightly ahead in fact tdr uh in that xp it's because um team ionic constantly goes off and is playing the map the way you're supposed to be playing it uh but tdr they're just staying in lanes both teams hit sixes together object number one is going to be on a line right about now uh oriel is going to be uh standing on that point a good hook coming out from that stitches but as he hooked lunatic with that leap of faith on the end to pull the gray away Oh, Satan says the only one left there. The stun comes out, followed up by the whip by the Oreo barrel to get away. Chastise comes out, catches nobody. The macro is great though. Double heal can't clear. Yeah. Uh oh, Grayman might be in a bit of trouble. As just comes out, there comes the hook, pulls him back. Misses that combo from the Malganis there. The sleep comes out on the two though. But here we go. Silly me, they didn't, didn't comment on the double support. <laughs> Both Oriel and Rhaegar have a great wave clear. Yeah. 42 stacks on the Asmodan, 4 minutes in. Chaz is coming out. A lot of spread damage and Uberak is going to be the first to fall over here. First blood goes in favor of Team Ionic. And maybe a hook comes out catching that Sonya and pulling her back. No. Uh, combined with Vala, it's a good wave clear comp. Uh, I did the five mustache thing for you, Monkai. I, I worry lack of damage. <laughs> it will depend on how safe Vala stays here. Thank you, Don't Trust. Appreciate it. Um, object number one, the Triglav goes in a favor of Team Ionic. And immediately they take it. And they go to the top lane. That's what you want to do. You want to go take A to B. Clear out as much as of the wall as you can but main objective is that well and well, that's exactly what team ionic is doing they're playing this perfectly a new barack forced the borrow as they saw hexblade go into his sleep but they they got they got what they came for they might want to be a little bit careful getting out of this i, I think they should be okay they should be okay there we go a new barack currently at 86 so well on his way to the hundred i guess five minutes in uh 200 nah he should have been at 100 by now 
like 130, 140 if he would have been there right now. Maybe we good? I don't know. Uh oh, Malgan is getting caught out over here. Nice hook coming out from the stitches to pull the Malganis to safety. Well played. Well played. How many toys do they have? Uh, Vala. Vala has one. Stitches has none. Oh, just a Vala. Okay. Heroics online for both squads simultaneously. They're looking at stitches maybe over here. Here comes Soldier of God. Curse Bullet comes in. Catches. Followed up by that leap. And a good pickoff onto that stitches. Well played. Uh, let's go over the heroics real quickly. We got Cocoon, Light Bomb. We got Demonic Invasion, Leap, and Curse Bullet. Two out of th two out of five that we did see being used there in that bottom lane on the stitches. On the side of Team Ionic, we have Putrid Bio. We've got Bloodlust. We have Crystal Ag Crystalis Ages, Crystal Ages, uh, Reign of Vengeance, and we have Dark Conversion. Ooh, Dark Conversion. Generally seeing Kerosene Swarm, Kerosene Swarm on the Malganis, but uh, all right. So now, now that Asmodown has demonic invasion 111 stacks completed on the quest at seven minutes in does he start does he start playing a little bit more aggressive and by aggressive i mean like kind of pushing out lanes a little bit more both these teams are so close in xp though there's the Sonya going to the bottom. There's the four man coming top. I don't think he would have gone the other one, but another big stun coming out from that Anubar rag. Light bomb popped on the Anduin as well. We have Bloodlust that's not popped, but uh, yeah, it did. And Anduin goes down. Putrid bile everywhere because, uh, well, it stitches. He can't control his stomach. The hook comes out catching nobody. Splits the team and have Malganis isolating the Grim. And here we go. Can they convert on this? No, they cannot. A lot being used over there. A lot being used over there. And they do pick up that one kill on to the Anduin. But 13's first online uh, for the uh, for uh, the Devil's uh, Rejects. So like I said, they stay in lane a little bit more. And with that, even though they were down one man, they still go ahead and force their way on to the support cam. So this is going to go in their favor. Oh my god, this might be in a tight spot here. The sleep is interrupted. Uh-oh, he's going the other way. Oh, he uses his ult over here. Forget what it's called. Once again, let's check it out. Dark conversion. Uh, the Crystal Age is used on him to get him to safety. Turret was also dropped as well. Well played by uh, the Devil's Rejects to kind of force them off the point. However, they have more than enough time. So 9 minutes 30 seconds in and, and uh, the uh, quest greed is completed. So that's a good asmo. Uh, Cocoon onto that Vala. They quickly want to take that out. Leap coming out in the back line onto the Rhaegar. There the stun from the uh, Nuberak comes in. Putrid Bile out. Bloodlust out. They're running everywhere. Focus one person. Random engines misses. Anubarak. Oh. Sonya gets pulled out by the Leap of Faith. Curse bullet comes off. Vala gets caught. What a chastise. And that's going to be a dead Vala. And because of which now they got to fall back. Because they have no DPS. And that kill might just give TDR the advantage in this second objective. Uh, they will be able to force their way on to this fort. And now uh, burn it down as Anubarak stands on the point there. That was a beautiful chastise. Oh, man. That was, that was an amazing chastise. Just catching the Vala. And this, as soon as he catches the Vala, it's like, boom. Oh, no. 
Uh, but here we go, 98-99. The stun from Anubarak to make sure that nobody steps up onto that point. It's going to be Anubarak that gets into it along with the Greymane. They're going to ignore this fort and take it. Maybe they're not. Maybe they're juking us. Yeah. Yep, they're juking us. <clears throat> TDR doing an excellent job in the macro at the moment. Yeah, they are and they're doing very very good. That was a very very good job. Okay, so technically the trig lob Objective B trig lob goes down to C and opens up your wind conditions uh, Well, not wind condition, but C opens up the wind condition later on in the game But they just decided to siege uh, top <laughs> I guess it's a fence. Oh, big leap coming out, catching three people on the back line, but no follow up uh, coming out. Cocoon comes out on Vala one more, once again. Chastise misses. The team quickly takes the Vala out. Now they're in trouble. Rain of Vengeance comes out. The follow up damage is not enough to close out onto that Greyman, but the chase is on. Curse Mother did come out as well. Bloodlust now. Run, run, run. They're running after the Lunatics. Rhaegar jumped onto the uh, Anduin, but they're unable to close out good damage though but unable to close out 16s online for 16s online for the devil's reject and with that the full five man walks away from that fight Oh, they know that this is happening. They know the support camp's happening here. <laughs> oh, good. Double stun coming out from the end. Went onto that Malganus. Followed up by the Curse Bullet. Stasis put in there, too. The objective. Oh, man. Malganus goes down. And the support camp goes in favor of the Devil's Reach Act. The mid fort is also taking out Stitches in a lot of trouble. He's going to go down as well. He almost. Oh, he was almost saved there. Uh, because the cocoon kind of was aimed towards him, but then he got interrupted and then Rhaegar gets cocooned and uh, That is very, very well played from TDR and now With the body advantage they are going to go ahead and siege man. Oh no Vala gets caught out and gets burnt to a crisp and sent back to Her well, is this it? Are they gonna do are they gonna push this in? Malganus is back up. They have a healing turret that they put down here. Curse Bullet comes out, misses. Good stun on to the Malganus. Uh, he does use his ult. <clears throat> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Bile use. Stitches is up now. They need their damage. They need their DPS. But this is going to be it, ladies and gentlemen. 20, 15, 14, 13, 12, 10. Can they close this out? There it is. GG's game number one goes in favor of Team TDR. The Devil's Rejects. Oh my god. Holy. Wow. What a turnaround. As, as soon as the DPS went down, um, as soon as DPS went down, it was like, boom, over. <laughs> It was over. That's how they played that. They played that so well. They played that so well. <clears throat> the ass that he does definitely has a stash. <laughs> uh, GG's coming up for both squads. They started off really, really well. Really, really well played by TDR. Generally, it is a four-man rotation. Top, mid, top, mid. But they went and played a 1-3-1 one, one, and still managed to, to keep up. In fact, out macro uh, Team Ionic. Team Ionic had a good lineup. Kind of had a good idea of where they were going. But, uh, but the DPS section is where once the DPS got caught out, they had nothing. Uh, they had nothing. So unfortunate but well played well played by tdr uh let's go over the stats real quickly over there we see 149 kc's damage coming out from that asmodan 55 kc uh hero damage coming out from the grayman uh 49k healing coming out from the uh, anduin We're doing really really good in that section uh but then we take a look at uh, team ionic we have 102k uh, Siege Damage coming out from the Stitches, 42k Healing coming out from the Rhaegar, 39k Healing coming out from the Oriole. That's, that's almost double, almost double 
of what uh, Anduin did, but uh, but the damage that's that's where they kind of lacked and throwing only 37k uh, damage coming off on the wallet. But even if you take a look at the rest, you have 36 on stitches, eight on Rhaegar, 12 on Oriel, 26 on the Malganis. Six skill to two in favor of uh, the Devil's Rejects. Here are the talent tiers. If you'd like to go over it, take a look at it. But I'm going to take a quick break uh, as we set up for game number two. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Oh, wait. Before I do that, let's go ahead and give everybody their points. Uh, let's see over here. 41% uh, thought that uh, TDR would take it. And 59% thought that it would uh, be... It would be... Uh, Team Ionic, uh, here you go, the Devil's Rejects. There are your points. All right, another thing, before I go ahead and take a break, let's talk about uh, these two teams' current standings. Because I didn't get to go over that because everybody was waiting, right? Uh, we see that uh, TDR is in, currently in that fourth position with 17 points and team ionic is currently tied with fc hong kong and waiting wait till 10 uh for that eighth position so i mean even if they manage to get out one game from this from this match like one one game uh they could kind of solidify themselves in that eighth position depending on what fc hong kong and wait till 10 uh, depending on the games that they have remaining, they could like Team Ionic could come out on top, uh, but we'll see how it goes. But if the Devils rejects uh, two O them and dominate them, then the Devils rejects will move up into third place because currently they are tied with Rise and Grind uh, and Hello Kitty Ashes Squad. They all have 17 points, uh, so we'll see. So two three way ties in this division. Yeah, interesting. Very interesting. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so if they win they get three points 20 points The spread between them is not that much Breakhouse 23 Probius 21 Devil's Rejects 20 and then 17 17 and then I believe Rise and Grind does play Devil's Rejects again So that'll be another deciding factor, but the majority of these teams have solidified their place in the playoffs uh, Harkin says uh, don't just says agreed like uh i know strong has a q something something <laughs> odd comp for a double healer i would have gone with a stronger bruiser instead of stitches personally oh here we go sorry all righty then while i was talking about everything else game number two has been prepared let me just go ahead and put that on screen for you guys uh it was picked by All right, just let me just tell them cast is ready uh, Here you go uh, Dark conversion was so bad if you actually get it off the worst that happens is a new barag gets chunk But he already has like no health <laughs> mm -hmm. I think it's a dark conversion used like twice twice or something uh, but yeah, Curse the Hallow is the next map that we are going to. It was picked by Team Ionic. His first pick goes to the Devil's Rejects. So we're going to see how how game number... What is this? Game number two turns out to be... I think somebody left the lobby and joined back in. Uh, oh, some random person. Never mind. I got kicked out of the lobby. Um, yeah, there we go. Uh, 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 who is this? There we go. Wow, lots of randos just joining in games. <laughs> oh my god, but here we go. 3, 2, 1, and we're going to jump straight into draft for game number 2 on Cursed Hallow. The Devil's Rejects taking on Team Ionic. Devil's Rejects up by one game to nothing. Oh, 
who will win game number two, whether it be a TDR or whether it be Team Ionic. Leave that up there for two minutes. All right, so I'm prepared. I am prepared. All right, so he wanted a peek at the stash. <laughs> Maybe he did. He just, he came in, he saw like the lobbies are full. Then he's like, then he leaves, then he comes back. And then he's like, hey, got, got, a, got any room? And it's like, dude, okay. Like, <laughs> play some time, play some time. Uh, but anyway, uh, Curse Halo being one of those big maps in the NGS map pools, one of the biggest. Uh, we got a couple out there. Uh, but this one is also heavily, heavily macro central. So you want to have your macro really good on this map. Camps are important as long as timing of the camps are good and your rotations are good, you're fine. Uh, this is also a map for the cheesy comps <laughs> or spicy picks, however you want to look at it. Uh, you got the TLVs coming out. You got the ABBA coming out, ABBA Illidan or like, you know, I think, yeah, yeah, uh, Brightwing, the globals come out here, so Brightwing getting banned out, one of the better globals uh, on this map, then you have Dahaka, you got Falstad, uh, Diablo really, really strong here as well, I wonder if Team Ionic is gonna, is gonna, like, ban out that Diablo, Satan Safe does play a good Diablo, do they take it away from him, they do ban the Johanna here, the next band coming out from the side of TDR is going to be ETC. All right, so ETC is what they banned out. ETC is another good pick, too. ETC, just in general, is a really strong tank. Uh, might not have the best uh, health pool at the moment, uh, but if you play him well and your positioning is really good, he can be a pain. Uh, but they do ban out that Asmodan. Asmodan did manage to get his quest completed within the within the 10 minute mark which is apparently really really good uh so they don't want any of those shenanigans again so we'll see the first pick coming out from the side of the devil's rejects is going to be that sonia on hebrew hammer once again does team ionic pick the diablo and the tychus here Deathwing also really strong in this map because he has infinite uh, stall. You got Chromie. Oh no, they're going with the Abatha. All right, Aruluna is going to grab the Abatha. They did ban out Abatha in game number one, uh, but they don't ban it out in game number two. So Aura is going to pick that up ASAP, followed up by that Lee Mink pick. All right, it is going to be that Ragnaros picked up by the Symbolic and Tychus on Soldier of God. Ragnaros can also be pretty good on this map with the Lava Wave and then at 20 if he takes the upgraded off it, the double Lava Wave really gets banned out. So I'm pretty sure Satan goes, uh, uh, Diablo here. Diablo and win again. That's what I would, that's what I would call it. It's like Diablo and win. Unless they ban it. Unless they ban it. Ooh, Vala gets banned out. All right, interesting. Uh, what's the next two picks coming up from the side of Team Ionic going to be? It is going to be that Varian along with the May. They like the double tank thingy, but I think the Varian is going to be a Twin Blades Varian in the off lane. Uh, Stro did play that Stitches, so just going off of that, him going Varian means he's probably going off lane. I say it's going to be that May. May is really good. Uh, but I'm going to. It depends. Are they going to go with uh, Avalanche or are they going to go with uh, Ice Wall? Ice Wall to set up Avalanche to. For the initiation and disengagement? We'll see how it works out for them. But. Oh, I was only 50% correct. Satan went with the Diablo and Lunatics with the Lucio. I thought he would have gone the Anduin again, but. 
I guess the Lucio is good enough. All right, and the final pick coming out from the side of uh, of Team Ionic is going to be that Ariel uh, Ariel again as the healer. All right, well there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Those are the two lineups. We got Sonia, Ragnar Rose, Tychus, Lucio, and Diablo going up against Apather, Li Ming, Varian, May, and Ariel. All right, you know what's coming next. It is time for predictions. The predictions are on a line. If you think that uh, the Devil's Rejects are going to close this one out in this game and not take us to a game number three and finish it in a dominating fashion, go ahead and drop your votes for them. But if you think that Team Ionic is going to go and make a comeback, and take us to a cover to game number three. Go ahead and drop your woes for them. But I will see you guys in the fray in game number two. Starting off on the left hand side in the blue trunks. We have Satan saves on the Diablo, Lunatics on the Lucio, Soldier of God on the Tychus, Hebrew Hammer on the Sonia, and Symbolic playing the Ragnaros. That is your squad in blue, the Devil's Rejects. And on the right hand side in the red trunks, we got Aura Luna on the Abathur, Ragu on the Oreo, uh, Stro on the Varian, Hexblades on the Mei, and Kalovian on the Li Ming. That is your squad in red. Team Ionic. Uh, look at the man stash out on that rag, huh? <laughs> Ragnaros, yeah. Uh, Abba gonna be lacking a strong clone target. Does he clone the Lee Ming, or does he clone the the clone the variant? Two twin blades. Ooh. Twin blades is a decent hat target, but cloning variant is a terrible choice in a team fight. I think I think Varian would be a good choice. <sighs> Quick uh way clear off the waves. They kinda seem to be making their rotation towards top. Do they wanna catch the Ragnaros off guard? No, may just run straight into the lane. Literally just straight into the lane. Alright. I mean, Luna's Lucio is OP. Oh, by Luna, you mean lunatics. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh, Ragnar's might be in a bit of trouble over here as he's going one on one with that hat. Bloodlust is going to go in favor of a team. Uh, Ionic. Well played. Okay. But objective is going to be in the bot lane right over here and immediately TDR is on their bruiser camp almost completed by Sonya. There you go. It is completed still waiting for team Ionic to finish up on to their siege camps and from here they probably move on to their bruiser camp uh, but Varian will be able to burn these things down as level fours come online right about now. He did go high King's quest so it will be a twin blades Varian but you never never know. The main, the off lane is kind of weird. Wait, what do you mean? What do you mean that? Oh, there is a pause that comes out. All right, all right, let's get out of that screen. Uh, wait, so you say Varian's a bad choice because you get an un. Uh, you get an untalented variant as a clone so a level one variant what do you mean so if he clones the variant does he not get the twin blades abilities are you sure because that would be that would make no sense Uh, seems like uh, our Luna is having some lag uh, But uh, they have readied up so maybe we start off in three two one Oh that is true Harkin knows a lot about this game 
No twin blades. Ah, oh, that's rough. I can't type here, guys. Yeah, just go with it. Just go with it. <laughs> All right, let's jump back into it. Uh, no, you get a plain variant because clone never benefits from any towns. Ah, interesting. Okay, well, I guess that makes uh, more sense then. Who would the clone be? I guess they were going Li Ming then? Or maybe Mei? Uh, Bavarian is taking on two of them right now. Here comes our rotation as the objective starts to come up. Will they just face check? Oh, yes. Li Ming just face checked. The charge came in, came in from the Diablo, but no follow up combo to come in from there. Uh, objective number one is online. The orb completely misses. Uh, charge on to that variant with the flip to follow, but a little late on the follow from the Tiger Soldier of God minigun on like a turret. But object number one is going to go in favor of the Devil's Rejects. Interesting that May never came down, even though Abba is on top, or maybe Abba just goes monstrosity. Maybe she doesn't go clone. Maybe she just goes monstrosity and just keeps pushing out lanes because it is Abba's job to kind of get that XP advantage. Varian might be in a bit of trouble over here as a full rotation comes up to charge onto Varian with the flip right now. The boot comes back from the lead. Oh, he's gonna take Tigers down. Yes, he is. He does not give up that easily, but Diablo just charges him back into the tower range and gets the pick on it. Uh, monstrosity would give good macro, but their comp isn't macro based. So again, not a great choice. Yeesh, I see. I see. I don't know. I've seen crazy DPS from untalented uh, May. <laughs> well, we'll see. The moment of truth will be there in 10 minutes. Oh, oh and, and as soon as level 10 comes out, we'll find out. Does ABBA go monstrosity or does ABBA go clone? Right, object number two will be up in 10 seconds. The devil, the devil's rejects is uh, already. No, they're not coming up. They're sieging mid. Uh oh, uh oh. Sonia might be in a bit of trouble over here. Variant already channeling the. Oh, barely had it. The charge comes out from Diablo, stopping the channel. Blizzard was dropped as well. Sonia is in their back line. So we're going to see how Sonia plays it out. Oh, the charge coming on to Diablo now. Diablo's in the back line all by himself. So near to meet him there. Now comes the turnaround from all of them. Just so much to spread damage coming out. Ragnar is taking so much damage. It's going to be the first to fall in this team fight. Meanwhile, in the back line, well, Sonya goes down as well. Oriel is the target. Can they save the Oriel? Diablo is looking for someone. He will go on the May. No, May pops her trade. But now it's going to turn attention towards the Leeming. Leeming gets blown up by the Tychus. It's just left and right. It's a 3v3 right now. Let's go. Oh, 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 oh. Lu Lucio gets caught. But, oh, they couldn't finish it off. Diablo with a good turnaround. That was a good turnaround charge. Well played, well played. But uh, one objective now goes in favor of Team Ionic. <laughs> All right, so close, so close, and we find out. Could do a monstro as a player if a, if get the <laughs> stacks. Well, yeah, that's what I meant. Okay, let's see. So it is going to be ultimate evolution. Okay. All right, well, there you go. It's ultimate evolution. So we'll see who she evolves into ultimate evolution. We got crystal ages. We have shield wall wave of force and ice wall Ooh, Li Ming almost getting caught up On the side of TDR we have apocalypse sound barrier lava wave dragon laser drill and Sonya is still thinking about what she wants to go <laughs> If that variant wasn't on OBJ, but yeah, but that's the whole point. That's why variant was gonna go there. All right, let's see who she's gonna clone. Uh, she clones uh, the Li Ming. 
Leeming gets cloned. <laughs> Shield wall is cringe. Oh, the charge and the flip onto Aura Luna. And the clone is dead. So that's a 70 second cooldown. Should be there in time for the next objective, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Ragnaros and Tigers pushing in top hard. Prior freeze use. Oh, Ragnaros might be in a bit of trouble over here, and he gets picked off. The sound barrier just a little too late. And Rag taking a lot of tower shots. Unfortunately, goes down. I feel like May would be the best clone here. That has been a hot topic of the evening. Who shall Abba clone? <laughs> so she's already cloned the the Li Ming once. Yeah, it was a weird clone time, but she did it. But now for this fight, they don't have the clone, so we're gonna see how it's gonna be. Yeah, we go. Objective is up. Me is standing right in front of their faces. Ragnaros is back. It's a full five v five. Diablo takes an orb to the face. Clones back up. Who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? Uh. So far, nobody. There we go. The flip, the charge. Variant in the back line taking a lot of damage. The charge comes out onto some boxing bug goes down Apoc, but unable to follow up. In the meantime, in the back line, the ice wall comes out as well, catching three people. Uh, the orb comes out, the flip, the charge into the dragon's laser. They need to destroy that laser. The laser goes down. Who got cloned? Did anybody get cloned? I didn't see it. I, I the whole fight went through, they didn't clone nobody. And curse is going to go in favor of Team Ionic. Okay, I, I didn't see anybody get cloned. Ming without talents though, the eternal ABBA struggle. <laughs> Maybe she's like, I won't clone any of you guys. All right. Just too busy sieging, so a molten core is going to be used there. Sun comes out onto that variant. Sonia versus variant. Let's see who wins this. Ooh. But variant does have the ABBA hat. Bolton core is down now. Maybe we're all wrong. Abba tunnels in uh, sulfur time. Slap a third time. <laughs> Maybe. Variant handling two people over here by himself. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, there's a big fight going out. Who got cloned? Nobody got cloned so far. Uh, needed to wall earlier on me, but still a good job. Yeah. All right, so other than the one clone, I didn't see anybody else get cloned. Oh, Ice Wall misses. Diablo unable to move anywhere, though. Nonetheless, Blizzard catches two. Apoc comes out. The stun completed under that May, but May can easily use her Cryer Freeze or Slide to get away, as we see over there. And that's what's going to happen. Are we going to see a boss play? Are we going to see boss play right now? Variant is having a field day with the Ragnaros, but Sonya comes in from the back, leaps onto that Variant, and wrecks his face. And Variant goes down. He was so close. Just one hit. He could have just hit the Rag. Like, he saw the Sonya coming. He should have just slapped the Rag one more time. The Rag would have died. It would have been one for one, even trade. Good to go. But uh, with that kill, now... <laughs> A TDR is slightly ahead in the XP game. Why would you clone a glorified minion? Aren't all of them glorified minions, whoever she clones? Because he's a glorified minion, man. That means he can do a little bit more than what a regular minion can do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well team Ionic is the first to secure their boss now Do they turn make a rotation on to TDR's boss because they know somebody will have to go topside to clear that out 
Uh, no, Varian goes and starts off the siege camp. Abba doing Abba y things. May running top for some reason to clear something up. I don't know. Bottom boss was taken. I completely missed that. They clean it up. They clean it up quick. There we go. Boom. Done. Objective number two. No, this is what? Objective number three, four, five. Objective number five. Objective number five comes online. Sonia secures the bruiser camp as well. I can't believe we're still we're still having a debate about who she's gonna clone. It's been like I don't know eight minutes or not eight minutes, uh, probably like four minutes or something, four or five minutes that she's cloned anybody. Oh, charge onto this um, onto the Diablo. Diablo just pops Apoc out of nowhere. Lehman gets caught into it. Stace is coming out onto that variant. Diablo's so low. He does have his souls, but barely manages to get out of that choke point. Still no Abba clone. Wait, why take the clone then? Just take monstrosity, right? <laughs> Yeah, maybe maybe the real debate is why no monstrosity. I mean, if I, even if you're gonna get a glorified minion, I mean, at least use the clone. There's there's no clone coming out. The clone came out once, and that was about it. Varian has his eyes on this Tychus. Let's see if he can burn him down. Here we go, one v one. Bam! With the Abba help, the charge comes in, the slow comes out, the smackaroo, 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 minus healing, and then run, 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 run. As the entire team makes a rotation down to bottom, everybody wants to fight. Let's go. Lava wave comes out. <clears throat> I mean, oh, the charge onto the Diablo. The Diablo charge back onto the man, kind of gets up. Blizzard does not cast them. Now they turn their attention towards somebody, but everybody on TDR just runs away, and that's going to be cursed in favor of TDR. Diablo Lucio doing a really good job of uh, taking away the attention from the objective uh, for team Ionic and they were able to secure it but now the question is how much value can they get Sonya in the top lane barreling down like a boss like an OG just wrecking everything in her path There we go, the charge comes out on to the Varian, Varian just smacking left, right and center Molten core used. Oh, nice charge followed up by the Apoc. The leap comes out too, but May was already in the cryo feast stage, but nonetheless is gonna get picked out. Sound barrier used as well as well. Wow, what happened there? Did I did I see a clone somewhere? Nope, no clone. Yep. And that is going to be a mid keep and that opens up their win condition But it seems like every time TDR opens up their win condition. They just go for it They'll take like one keep down and then all right, let's go core baby. Let's do this Okay, but this time they're gonna take two keeps Clone oh my god the variant is taking so much damage the crystal Aegis comes out But it's not going to help as he is burnt down as well. They're going to take this keep Oh my god, and then they're probably pushing the core. Satan says they're getting a lot of damage. Yeah, they don't want to go back. They call it. This is game. 20s are online. We got uh, Hellgate. We have uh, House Party, Lava Surge, Ignore Pain, and we got Bob and Weave. Oh my god, Diablo goes down, but he does have his souls. He will come back. Let's go. Oh, finally, it's right on cooldown. Who? Who? It was Aura that, uh, let's say, not Aura. She cloned the Li Ming. <sighs> she cloned Li Ming. 
Oh, and the actual demon goes down, picked up by the Tychus. I should have kept an eye on that one, but I was looking at the clone. Uh, meanwhile, Sonya over here is sneaking away with the brute the, uh, siege camp. The clone did come out. It was on uh, Li Ming. I saw it. May got caught out there hard. And uh, with the body advantage, not even body advantage because it was like 4v4, uh, they still go ahead and start off on the enemy boss. What is uh, Team Ana gonna go? Leap comes out, followed up by the APOC, but good time. Oh, big ice wall coming out as well. The Stasis comes out, a lot of damage onto Diablo. Diablo doesn't have soul, so that's gonna be a dead Diablo. That can they turn this around? The boss does get leashed. They turn their attention towards the Tychus as well as the Sonya. Are they gonna continue to keep on chasing? Li Ming wants to. Sonya gets pulled back. Let's go. Sonya gets blown up. Now they turn their attention towards the Lucio. Oh my god, can they get the Lucio? What? No, he gets away. Come on, bro. Why are you getting away for it? Jesus. But you know what? That was very well played by Team Ani. Uh They defended their boss. Now it gives them the opportunity to go ahead and take the pass. Uh, but TDR might go bottom and take the boss at bottom. There they go and TDR. Oh, ah, there we go. TDR is on their boss advance. Yeah, they had it. They had it pretty much. They had it. They had a lot of pressure. They could have just gone for it, but we'll see what it is. They could take. I mean, they could take this boss and go. Oh, Team Ionic wants to make a play, but Hexblade might get caught over here. Big ice wall coming up, followed up by the APOC. The leap comes out too. Choir Feast comes out. Hellgate popped in the same place. He put everything into killing that May. Holy moly. Wow, that was a lot. The 20s coming out onto the side. Uh oh, Leeming might get caught over here. This is bad. Oh no. Oh no. Where did Leeming? Oh no. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was a rough place to be in. And I think this is going to be it, ladies and gentlemen. This might be GG's as this boss makes its way down straight to core. Uh, we got Hive Mind. We got Diamond Resolve. We got Glory to the Alliance. Tal Rasha's elements along with the big one. Molten Core popped as well. That's a very healthy uh, boss on the core. Sound barrier used as well. Diablo keeping everybody off of them while they finish the core. And that's going to be it, ladies and gentlemen. Game number two along with this series going in favor of Team The Devils Rejects during it in 2-0 fashion. Well played. GG's GG's well played well played. Uh, let's go over some of the stats real quickly before I get one of these uh, gentlemen uh, Here all for an interview. We got 194k siege damage coming out from that Ragnaros 67k uh, Hero damage coming out from the Tychus 122k uh, Healing coming out from that Lucio very well played by that Lucio uh, And on the side of team Ionic we have Abathur putting out only 89k siege damage 85k hero damage coming out from that leaming leaming did quite a bit uh 54k healing coming out from that oriel along with an added added 35k healing uh still wasn't quite enough to match that lucio 122k on the lucio oof oof sash confirmed on the rag 
a variant should have tried to base race boss i think uh but still hard to win with no keeps and two boss in them yeah uh i think not popping abba clone on the third objective was the deciding factor yeah i still feel like maybe monstrosity would have been the better play in that we'll just take monstrosity and just like siege 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 right add pressure add pressure add pressure but that's how they opted to play it uh here are the talent picks uh for the heroes if you like it you can copy it if you don't like it you can comment uh any questions that you guys have for uh for the people that are coming to interview you can go ahead and drop your questions for them and i'll go over that uh take a look at the talents let's go Uh, Division D. Here we go. At Devil's Rejects. At Team Ionic. GG's. At the Devil's Rejects. And I have some. Lobby, let's go to lobby. We'll go to lobby two. We'll go to lobby two. Lobby two. Oh, there you have it. We've got Symbolic joining us, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, GG's on your performance today. How are you feeling? Oh, wait, uh, we got Satan here well, too. First of all, nice. we have mustaches, so we're feeling great. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, you know we've we've come from a couple of tough losses and I, we readjusted our our game strategy and this win felt really good. So. Yeah, you guys looked uh, pretty good on this one as well. Sorry, uh, let's take a look. Uh, game number one, uh, we went to Moskaya Foundry. That was picked by Team Ionic. Uh, you guys ran something different here. You guys ran a 1-3-1 one, one strat. Uh, generally, you see teams going the uh, four-man top mid, top mid rotation with one man in the off lane. So what made you guys change that strat and, and decide to stick with the 1-3-1? One, one? So we... Uh Looking at the previous matches, they like that map, and they get we're going a specific comp, and we knew they were going to go a hyper carry Vala, and um, at when then when I denied the Vala, they went for something else. I forget what it was, another tank instead, and then right off the bat, I was like, we're out soaking them. They can't kill us. They're double tanky. Let's do the one three one. There's no there's no need to rotate, right? Make them rotate. Oh. So we don't we didn't have to worry about anybody getting caught because they had double tanks and really couldn't put out the damage. So we were just maximizing our fucking XP lead. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense. And you guys did that too. At first, chat was like, oh, you know, they might not be able to match up in the XP because uh, Stitches was going the uh, the smash build. So it gives them a little bit more wave clear in there. But then you guys did such an amazing job, um, you know, maximizing your rotations. You guys were always on time on your camps. Uh, whenever they were up, you all were there. And then the fights that you guys took, your fights were really, really on point, especially on the Nanubarak, picking those targets for those cocoons, you know, isolating the four men and uh, taking the disadvantage from them. That was really good. So you guys would just isolate the Vala or isolate the Rhaegar. And then it would, it would kind of go into you guys' favor. Talk about, uh, tell me, how was your comps during those fights? Was Vala your main priority or were you guys were like, you know, who are we going to focus on to take out of the fights? Yeah, Vala was definitely our um, main target because I knew they were going to go a Bloodlust. And they're basically going to use her as a hyper carry with the Illidan hat. Mm -hmm. So with that, with Abathur hat. So we banned the Abathur. So then they were like, okay, we're going Rhaegar for the Bloodlust. So we can still have the hyper carry, the damage. And I was like, all right, well, I'm going to go Nubarak and I'm taking Vala out of the fight. Wow, fair enough. So, no, oh, fair enough. And that was that was amazingly done. You guys, uh, you guys took proper fights. You guys didn't overextend. You guys played it very smooth, very very nice and refreshing place to see coming out uh, on Volskaya Foundry. So uh, you guys got the dubs in that one. Finished off real fast though. You guys just took took one good team fight, and then you guys just went through mid, 
you guys didn't even bother with the objective took the keep and went straight core like you guys didn't even wait like was that your entire intent or was that a quick adjustment on your part to call it a game there um well like once i see those once we get a certain amount of kills we see those death uh, timers go down and we got a freaking asmo dan it's like we're taking game early quick there's nothing they're gonna take it, it. Taking it. <laughs> oh, he stacks at nine minutes, which is yeah, pretty, uh, pretty yeah. rough to give it to Jasmo, but I think so, it's because they did the double tank. I seen we we knocked out two or three of them, and I was like, we're going to core. I think the death timers are at like 30 or 40 seconds. Uh, yeah, 30 seconds, um, I think they were, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, we got time to knock out core. And and then say they, they all res and get back up, we'll still have time to knock out core. Yeah, I thought I thought you wouldn't make it there because of the simple reason that Asmodee had already popped like demonic invasion at mid. So I was like, oh, maybe they popped it too early. Maybe they're not gonna make it. But nah, you guys just took advantage of it, closed it out. Uh, because it was the same thing. The Vala went down. The Vala had a longer kill timer because you kill her last, and uh, mm -hmm. because of that, they only had the tanks come up, and basically all your DPS was there, and that's how you guys ended the game. So GG's game number one, uh, very very well played. Uh, game number two. Uh, this was an interesting one. This was a little weird. Uh, you yeah, guys, it was <laughs> super weird. <laughs> <laughs> you guys went a very standard composition. You guys got the Diablo Tychus combo in there. You got the Ragnaros for the push for the lava waves. Uh, Luna takes on his Lucio is known for it. He's crazy on it, and and the Sonya as well being played by Hebrew Hammers. There were some really good picks over there. And then they picked the the Abitha Oriole variant, Li Ming and Mei. When you saw that comp come out, what went through your minds? We didn't know what to expect because you know you know, normally don't see that comp, but it was like it's a hyper carry uh freaking um what's his name? Varian. Varian. Yeah. Varian. Yeah. So I was like, we got Varian's gonna eat us alive. We gotta get a hold of that Varian. So early game, we're like, don't stack the Varian. Stay away from the yeah. Varian. Um, our wave clear and our siege, I felt like was way better, and um, it was basically get the XP lead. Don't stack the Varian, and when Varian gets in a fight, just jump on him fair that makes sense so chat has been having this whole debate through second game because abathur went with clone ultimate evolution right uh right. and we've been debating on who would be the clone target when you guys saw ultimate evolution what came through your mind Ming. yeah double Ming is pretty brutal double yeah, Ming. Yeah. all right yeah you get hit by two orbs you're, you're almost yeah, you're done scared. the oh. the thing that drove me nuts that i do even i just want to try this in like random ranked is the hat on the May top lane? It was atrocious. Like ah, yeah. a couple <laughs> times, I got caught early. Like I just couldn't. You perma slowed with Abba beating you over the head, and May is just keeping you blinded. So that, like, big shout out to that combo because it wasn't even fun to play against. I guess I kept telling the team, I was like, dude, this. <laughs> yeah, no, I can imagine. I caught that too. Like twice, you got caught out there. You got slowed. Um, you always got hit by tower shots for some reason like every single time because you were so slowed there uh they took advantage of that to at least get to you but uh gazing yeah. at the stash you know yeah. <laughs> yeah gazing at the stash that's what it was uh but uh, nonetheless you guys just turned it around once again one team fight now you guys had this huge lead you guys push through mid you guys get cursed you push mid uh by the way great job on uh, you satan and uh lunatics as well as hebrew hammer for for diverting their attention on the last uh last objective in order to get free for you guys to get cursed you guys take that and you guys move into mid take the core uh, take the keep uh then you guys rotate but i thought you guys were gonna go straight core from there but you guys didn't you guys went bottom you get bottom keep so now you're up you have like this huge advantage and you guys decide to go to boss do their boss mm -hmm. the boss was at like 70 you guys have taken off like 70 75 percent of its hp is 25 percent left but you guys decide to fight what made, made yeah. you guys why'd you guys make that call there that was my call was all right we're not gonna have time to finish uh death timers were still relatively low and they had Pretty sure they had their damage still up. So I was like, we ain't got time to core. Let's just knock out bottom uh, keep. We did bottom keep. Then I was like, all right, let's try to get their top boss. But I was like, as soon as we see them, as soon as we see them unleash. And it was just a miscommunication between the team. Mm. Um, and that's that's what happened there. It was it was the unleash, but I guess the trigger, trigger finger got happy. Um, Sony seen a good leap. He leaped in. And then by then we were committed. And um, it was just a uh, bad communi 
communication with, with the ah, team. Fair enough, fair enough. Because that was a nice little choke point there. Uh, the leap was good, followed up by that APOC. But as soon as the APOC came out there, May went into her cryo freeze. And kind of any damage that came up from the APOC got negated because then the stasis was thrown on top of her as well. And then they just turned on you guys. But even from them, it, it didn't feel like you guys lost composure at that point in time. Because you guys had built so much off a lead for yourself. Um, that you guys just went ahead, took your boss, and then they came to your boss like you guys ignored their boss completely they came to your boss you guys took a good fight there Lee Ming got caught out uh when Lee yeah. Ming got caught out was that the time you guys decided that you guys were going to court or once you guys we were, going to, we were, regardless. We were pushing with core as soon as the boss was up we oh, okay were pushing with core. um Lee Ming was just a, a bonus um I I did the bottom boss call because I was watching the mini map and I seen them clearing lanes and everybody's like, no, this is a bad call. This is a bad call. I'm like, dude, I, I have them on the map. I know where they are. Mm. We have time. So we knock it out. And I think they're rushing there and they got split off. And um, May was the first one to get caught because she was the first one there. She got caught. She was done. Um, so then we're like, all right, we're pushing with boss to core. And then I think uh, Ming got caught. Yeah. Two of yeah, the so two of them the down, and then it was like the Bruiser pushing mid too. Yeah, Bruiser was mid. They had a siege bottom. No, siege went the other way. The boss just cleared it out, and then when you guys had boss and everything there, my God, it was it was a rough one. Twenty minutes into that game, you guys clean it up. Nine kills to ten. They actually got 10 kills over you guys just because of that one team fight that they go. But nonetheless, you guys end up with the dubs. GG's, congratulations. With this domination victory, though, this now puts you guys in a third position. You guys were in a three-way tie. Uh, but with the three points that you guys earned tonight, you guys are in the third spot. Hopefully, uh, I don't know how many of the games you have left. But uh, depending on uh, FC, is it FC Hong Kong? Uh, we have, um, we have. And we have and um, Rise, and, Rise and Grind. Ooh, so so the, both the teams that you guys were tied up with, those are the teams that you guys are playing next. Uh, so yeah. as long as you guys come out on top by even one one game, uh, but obviously you guys are gonna you can look forward for a domination, obviously to secure a much higher seed. Uh, as this is, uh, you know, securing your spot for the playoffs, and the higher the seed you get, the better it is because then you play the lower teams, right, in the beginning of the playoffs. So I want to wish you guys the best of luck. Congratulations once again, GG's on this victory. But before I do bid you guys farewell uh any shout outs that you guys would like to make go ahead stage is yours you know there's one shout out we always give and it's it, the royal you know the the shout out without her i wouldn't be here give the big shout out to the moms oh you know, yeah moms make it happen uh the waifu the dogs and the kids you know because they put up with me uh yelling at my computer screen fair 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 yeah shout out to um team iconic played a good match um they definitely uh gave us something different to deal with some we weren't expecting and um that they, they executed it well so shout out to that team giving us something new and something fresh to play against cool 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 and shout out to the casters man thank you for volunteering <laughs> taking your time and streaming these matches for us i appreciate it bud yeah no and problem people and people with the stashes yes sir <laughs> can't forget that did i cover everybody did everybody get a turn Wait, what about Lunatic? I think they nailed it to the moms, to uh. the teams that play, <laughs> the captors. Well appreciated. Makes it fun. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much, uh, guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate you joining us for this interview. And once again, I wish you guys for the, be the best of luck for the remainder of the season as well off as your playoff contentions. And uh, hopefully you guys end up with the seating that uh, you guys are looking forward to. And I'll catch you guys in the playoffs. Gucci, yep. Thanks, Thanks man. Have a good one. All right, well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That was uh, half of the team of the Devil's Rejects. That was Satan Saves. That was Lunatics. Uh, Symbolic was there. Two, three of them. Uh, majority of the team was there. <laughs> uh, GG's to them, taking, uh, putting on a great show, winning the game 2-0. Uh, secure, kind of securing themselves in a good, good spot on the map there in the division. If you take a look at it one more time. So with this win, they move up into third place. 
but they're playing Rise and Grind and Hell Action Squad next, so I mean it could go either ways. But regardless of wherever they go, they're still in a good spot. They will qualify for playoffs. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's really really good for them. Uh, looking forward to seeing what they can do. Uh, knowing that the Devils rejects, this is their second season. Uh, season 10 was a different lineup. Season 11, a different lineup, uh, but an entirely new team that's coming into season uh, 11. And uh, a great performance coming out from them as well. So we look forward to seeing what they can do in the playoffs. But uh, that's going to be it for me, ladies and gentlemen, this evening. But before I do bid you all farewell, thank you for all the follows, for the subscriptions. Really, really do appreciate it. Uh, it always helps catch me tomorrow uh, once again at 7 p.m. MST. It's going to be Animaniacs taking on Almost Legends Gold. There's going to be a C East match and once again uh, I believe Animaniacs is fighting for their playoff live so we'll see how that one goes and uh, I'll catch you, for, uh, catch you for that one but as you know what we're going to do is let me give everybody their points 86% thought that TDR is going to win so we'll give them their points and we are going to raid a channel we are going to go to isis channel there we go he's currently casting another heroes of the storm game as well it's division a west uh manuel's worse is better than bot so let's jump into his stream and uh, show him all the love tell him that you're coming over from kai's stream and hit uh go ahead and spam his chat and everything like all the good stuff uh but once again i appreciate everybody over here thank you thank you thank you and i will catch you guys later in the fray peace